Dope, let's jump into it. Cool. It is 7.10 now or 7.09, whatever time it is. It doesn't matter. We're getting started. I'm extremely excited. Uh, we've been traveling now for a little bit over two weeks. And, I, I, you know, we had a meeting with the leaders yesterday. And a big reason why we're doing this call is it was a, it was a key topic that was being discussed in the leadership webinar. And I think if it's being discussed there, it's probably something that everyone needs to hear. And it comes down to actually building relationships and, and knowing that we're in the relationship building business. We're in the people business. You know, we're not in a business to sign people up, collect the $25 check, get your P150, P600 pay, P1000 pay, and then move on. You have to build relationships with your team. You know, I think a, a good example of this, you know, from a, just a, I guess, a logistical standpoint is, you know, if you own a traditional business or let's say you own a McDonald's, right? And you, you have this McDonald's and you're, you know, the, the company launches in 10 days and you've hired everyone on and you said, cool, everyone show up on February 20th, but you did no training. You didn't know onboarding. You didn't get to know your employees. You didn't get to know what times work best for them. You didn't get to know what their goals are. You didn't get to know who they're going to work best with. You didn't get to know their personality types. You didn't get to know how to actually lead them. You didn't, you didn't get to know anything about them. That business would fail. It wouldn't be successful. The, the, the launch event, people who would come through the drive through wouldn't know how to do the orders. They wouldn't know how to count change or use the machinery. They wouldn't know how to be at the front desk. They wouldn't know when to clean. They wouldn't know, you know when to order the new food. They wouldn't know how to run the business, right? It, it's the same thing in this business here is not that we have to treat it like you know people are a business because we need our business to succeed is because as we begin to build these relationships, people begin to succeed. Right. That, that's the biggest thing here. And Jim Rohn talks about how many people can you help become successful? The more people that you help become successful, the more successful that you're going to become. And so ask yourself, have I really been building deep relationships with people in my organization? And even if you don't have an organization, say you're a customer, but you hopped on this call because you wanted to learn how to become a leader, how to build relationships, what to do over the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months. Right. Are you building relationships with other people? in QC, in the trade house, in other organizations, in your community. And, and this is a skill set that I think is extremely important. And if you haven't read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Amazon, Audible, SoundCloud, YouTube, go get it right now. Wow, get it after the call. Don't get it right now. But write that note down and go get it because this is a skill set that's required for just success in life itself. So I, I think really there's no better person to do it other than Nancy, and, and that's why last night I asked Nancy if she would do this meet with me, and me just more so coming in towards the end and, and you know and finalizing a couple of things because I've been able to see her now. We've been traveling for what five weeks or something. It's one 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 here. We've been traveling for five weeks now, and even with time being crazy, schedules being crazy, time differences, she's been able to still do webinars, still be on phone calls with her team, still check in with her team. Like she's still doing everything perfectly right and I think it's one of the craziest things uh, craziest thing because her organization has some of the best retention and it's because those people have, the organization has some of the best relationships and so I think it's super important not only you know building a relationship because you want to get someone into the business but continually that relationship once someone's in because really we call this a family right but are you, you treating it like one right or are you treating it like the family that you currently have? And that's why the success is not there. So you know, that wasn't meant to be a shot at anyone. That's just like, you know, think about it. But whatever, right? So really, I'm going to let Nancy take over. Let her kill this. Uh, guys, she's literally a sniff away from P2K, and it should be done this week. So if you all want to just go massive in the chat, send her some crazy energy. Um, She's putting in the work and it's done. So with that, drop a shit ton of sevens. Nancy's taking over. Sweet. This is actually really kicking in. I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is, they have this in the States, but the doctor, Monster Energy, it's kicking in. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Holy shit, the sevens. All right, guys, thanks so much. I am going to, uh, okay. Thanks so much for all the love. I love that Tim started off with gratitude because that's how we should be starting off always. Um, and I kind of want to just reemphasize that. And because we are talking about cultivating deeper relationships and we are talking about retention and getting into the nitty gritty of this business and this business is knowing people, 
right? I've been saying that so much lately. I feel like I sound, I'm sounding like a broken record. Like if you don't know people, you have no business having a business. <laughs> so getting into that and getting into just back into gratitude, I want you guys to think about the last time that someone did something for you. I want you to think about the last time that someone bought you Starbucks or gave you a notebook, let you borrow a pen, bought you a flight. <laughs> I want you to think about especially your mentors, whether it be me, Mike, Tim, you know the drill. You have a lot of people in your corner and you might be thinking from one perspective, okay, this is something that they have to do because they signed me in. But also think about it when it's going to be your business, when you have 100 people in your organization, when you have 500, 700 people in your organization, this shit gets hard. You're dealing with a lot of people, a lot of emotions, and sometimes you take that home. So I want you to think about the last time that someone did something for you and be grateful for them and then remember it, have it be uh, maybe like neurologically inscribed because we lead by example. At least that should be the idea. Always lead by example. So before we get into everything, I want you to realize that income is not measured by the amount of money that you make or the rank that you are, but by the people that follow you and the people that, um, I guess, respect you right the lives that you change so money isn't or success isn't measured by the amount of money that you made but the lives that you change never want to agree on that i kind of want this to be a little bit interactive i like seeing things in the chat thank you guys for all the sevens dope so yeah we want to create a culture in the team where ego is locked at the door right i always say your ego is not your amigo so you want to make friends inside the office you want to make friends instead of the starbucks that you're hanging out at or the events that you're showing up to, but leave your ego at the door. Otherwise, that's going to get in the way. That's going to be the fog in front of the mirror, and you're not going to be able to see it clearly, or you're not going to be interpreted as a person that you want to come off as. And first impressions are everything, right? So leave your ego at the door, and then as a leader, and everyone here is a leader because you show up, don't think about how far you can go, but how far we can go together. If you want to go far, go alone. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That's what we're here doing. If these guys wanted to go hit Chairman 25 really quick, they'll create a funnel, get everyone in, don't care about the launch processes, only care about the PRSV. But that's not the case. Because behind every PRSV, every group volume, there's a soul. That's a life, a life, a life waiting to be changed. If you guys start hearing some Italian accent, just don't mind me. But in order to create deeper connections with people, you want to understand where they're coming from. One, understand that they're a human being. Two, understand where they're coming from. Three, know why they're doing this. And then always have their best interests at heart. Right? So I'm super, super grateful to have, you know, seeing a lot of the same names, seeing a lot of the same faces always come onto these calls because you guys are eager to learn. And that's the whole point about this business, right? Like knowledge isn't only potential power, it's only powerful if it's applied and spread. So what you learn today or what you've been learning all week or however long you've been doing this, it's not about just what you retain in your head, but what you can tell other, another person. And it's not anything like plagiarism. Like that's what knowledge is for. What good is a book if only one person reads it? That's not information. So knowledge is meant to be spread. Anything that you learn anything that you pick up all these little gems all these little nuggets feel free to share the hell out of it i forgot what my point was for that. but people want to know that you're going to be there for them right this is a family so when you have times of hardships when you have times where maybe you're not giving 110 percent because you're not feeling 110 percent, that's going to be okay know that you have a team of about 500 people 35 other people on this call right now, or 36, including me, um, on this call right now, that are going to be there to pick you up. This is a push and pull, right? Matt Rosa always says that when you push your leaders up, they're there to have leverage to pull you up. So this is a duo, this is a to and fro, this is how the universe works. You give, I receive, I give, you receive. That's just how that shit goes. So when you are I guess, existing. <laughs> you wanna make friendship and kindness your superpower. Think about what you're really good at. Whether you're super social, whether you love connecting with people, maybe you're a little bit more timid, 
but you just always have people's best interests at heart. That is your superpower. So exploit that in, in front of other people. There's nothing wrong with that. Own who you are, know who you are and be the best version of you that you can be. You don't have to be a pretty picture or this perfect image or anything that you think that you ought to be. Just be the, be the best version of you. That is your superpower. And then remember, if you're not prepared to teach, to inspire, to educate, or add value, then you're not prepared to lead. So always be consuming information, whether it be YouTube videos, podcasts, um, Spotify stuff, trainings, whatever it may be, like have a notebook at hand, be ready to jot down things because you're only bound to have a certain amount of information that you take in. So if that shit goes in one ear and not the other, well, what good is it? So be, be prepared to always be learning. Put yourself in a position to always be learning. Um, I think one thing that a lot of people enjoy, or at least I do when I see it, is transparency. That's how I know that a relationship is going to last or even start or spark to begin with. If a person is transparent with me, then I'm done. <laughs> you know, but I don't want someone that's like giving me a front. I don't want someone that's putting their best foot forward, but I'm not sure if that's the real bump. You guys know what I mean? Like, think about that. Think about the people that you admire. Think about the people that you appreciate and what are the aspects of them that you appreciate? Humility, transparency. It's okay to be wrong. I don't have all the answers and I'll say it in the launch. I don't know everything. So if you ever have a question that I don't have the answer to, I will direct it to the person that does. And then I plug them in with my name because <laughs> they know more. But it's okay to not know everything. Be transparent. People want to know that they're talking to another human being. Right? A lot of us, a lot of us are under, I say under the age of 45. Probably younger than that. For sure, right, Cody? <laughs> um, so just be transparent, be relatable. Humble, humble yourself before the market humbles you, before the business humbles you. Because you will get checked. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Be a human being. Do more human being stuff. Okay, so don't compare yourself to other people. Be inspired. Um, remember that you can't get results without the process. So again, remember what that process looked for for you. Some of us Actually, we're all in the middle of that process always, right? Because that journey is just constant. We're in the infinite game, not in the finite game. So remember that when you're talking to other people, when they're going through their hardships and their process. And that just goes back to being relatable. But I do want to highlight a few um, abilities or skill sets that I think would really, really help. That I think we just don't think about until we put them, put them into black and white ink in front of us. So a few of those skill sets are the ability to relieve stress. If you allow yourself to get frustrated and upset by setbacks, you'll struggle as an entrepreneur. Why? Because you'll carry that weight with you infinitely, perpetually. And then you know, <laughs> we're all human beings here. So I think that everyone knows um, that feeling of bringing, home, or bringing work home with them. Just being in a funky mood because your boss pissed you off or because there's so much drama going on at work. So be able to let that shit go and don't let it affect you in other places. So you could do some meditations, you could do some mantras, you could have your own kind of um, just mental breaks where you step outside for five minutes and breathe. You could do some exercises. You could do some journaling. Whatever it is that works for you to put yourself in a clearer state so that your previous mood isn't going to affect anyone else, do that. The second skill set is the ability to make entrepreneurial friends and be the plug. So what that means is attracting the right people because these people are going to hold you accountable, right? You want to attract people with the right mindset, people with the entrepreneurial mindset, right? That's why we're looking up those hashtags. You want to improve your odds by accumulating the nugs. <laughs> Do you ever catch yourself in a conversation with Mike and Tim and they just fucking drop nugs all the time? Yeah, you wanna find more friends like that because then you get to apply what you just learned into other situations. That's the whole purpose. 
And then what I said, about, when I said be the plug, connect people all the time. If you have a friend over here that you've been having a conversation with and another friend comes up to you, connect those two friends. Make sure that the whole world are friends. The whole world is made up of friends, I guess. The third skill set is the ability to identify strengths and weaknesses. So know that you don't have to be perfect, right? When you know, when you drop your ego and you learn how to say, okay, this is what I'm really good at. And it's okay to say that. It's totally okay to say, yo, I am super good at edification. I'm super good at presenting. I'm super good at connecting someone or relating some. It's okay to say that. But you also have to be really good at saying, these are my weaknesses. This is where I'm not so great at. Or I could use some extra help or some extra practice. So when you know what you're good at and what you're not good at, and you find someone to compliment you. So if I'm really good at edification, but I'm not good at pre presenting products, cool. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna open for people and find someone else to do products for me. Feel someone to fill that, find someone to fill that space until you get better at it. The next one is the ability to recruit effective people and develop people into success. So recruiting effective people, we kind of touched on a little bit, right? But developing people into success, that's where the launch comes in. How are you launching your people? What's up, Cody's brother? <laughs> How are you launching them? What's your tonality with people? Are you being relatable or are you putting yourself on a pedestal? Humble yourself. Are you focusing on their why, their goals? Are you holding them accountable for the things that they want to be held accountable? Are you giving them um, book recommendation or video recommendations? And oftentimes I don't like to just send like the same one book to other people, but something that they personally need. If I know that they're dealing with a certain thing, then I'm gonna give you a, a certain book, right? Or if I know that you wanna learn a different aspect or a different subject, then I'm gonna give you a book according to that. So really, this is, how, this is how people know that you're just thinking of them. Be thoughtful, be courteous. If you recruit effective people, you must take on the coach mentality to help break them through. So become the coach. Put yourself in that mindset. If, you're, if you have someone that's been sitting on the bench, you gotta train them to get off of it. Put them in the game. They have something, they have value to give. Maybe they're just shying away a little bit at a time. But you have to get, you have to put yourself in the coach mindset to be able to train them in a certain way. Being a coach is really hard. I'm sure Tim knows about that. He's been coaching a little bit. So leaders see things in people before they notice it in themselves. Highlight the best in people. If Alana is on every single call, why do you think we say it all the time? Because that is. Well, one, it's amazing, <laughs> but two, it's just, it's something to highlight. You know, she should be recognized for the work and effort that she puts in. Same thing with everyone else. That's why we start off with appreciation and gratitude. That's why we say, okay, think of the last, uh, of the last time that someone did something for you. Just highlight, what's, highlight the best in people. And you wanna do that for everyone. You wanna do that for the people that are already up here and you wanna do that for the people that maybe aren't or are feeling a little bit smaller. That's how you get those people's attention. If you're, in a, in a, if you're in a crowded room and you see someone out in the corner, you know, being by themselves and maybe being a little bit more timid, go up to that person, give them a compliment or have a conversation with them, learn a little bit more about them. If you want to help enough people get what they want, then you will get what you want. So let's talk a little bit more about the, the meticulousness of the business, I guess. Um, a lot of people on here, let's see, we got 38 people on here. A lot of people on here don't have what's called an inventory, but I want to mentally pre prepare you for something that's called inventory because like Tim mentions all the time, you should have a business that runs 24 seven. If you have a business that runs 24 seven, guess what? You have to know what is in your business. Does that make sense? If you have a restaurant, you have to know what ingredients you have. You have to know who's on staff. You have to know the hours that they're working. You have to know who they're working with. So inventory, super meticulous, pretty tedious, but it's completely worth it because you have a list 
of everyone you should be working with. And like I said, we're only human, right? So if I'm, if I'm working with 100 people in my organization and then people outside my organization, right, because we're cross-pollinating all the time, my brain can't contain all those names. Let's be honest. <laughs> so I look through that list minimum one time a week, if not multiple times a week. And I go through, oh shoot, I haven't talked to Monica in a couple of days. Let me see how she's doing. Let me see what she's working on, what she's dealing with, right? So you go through your inventory and you see, okay, what this person needs, you build that relationship with them because now that they know, now they know that you care, right? What do we appreciate the most out of these guys is that they're dealing, they're handling with, they're handling 500 people in their organization and they still know almost everyone's names and why they're doing this, their goals, what their next rank is. That's not anything to take lightly anyone or everyone. Dealing with 500 people, I forgot where I learned this from. Um, I think it was Simon Sinek, but dealing with 500 people goes over the business cap. So there's a, a, a magic number of 150 staff members where it's like, if a business exceeds the number 150, it's going to need extra levels of leadership. So for every 150 people, you need another general manager, you need a floor manager, you need a shift manager, so on and so forth. So having over 150 or having 500 people, please, please, please take into consideration how difficult that is. And please, please, please be appreciative of all that. So just going back to inventory, you wanna do weekly check-ins with the people that you, you work with. Even if you have nobody on your team right now, guys, prepare yourselves to care for other people. This is what we talk about cross-pollination. So let's just use an example. If Monica has only been working with the people on her downline, cool, then she will only know those people. That's fine. But think about it this way. What if she started talking to Sheila? What if she started talking to Brennan or Cody or Tyler? Or Priscilla right now she's learning now she's having those conversations with them now she's picking up those nugs because these people all have the same mentality they're all entrepreneurs she's creating entrepreneurial friends and now she gets to use their strengths where her weaknesses lie so it's all coming just kind of coming back together right so you cross pollinate work with other people be social people are social beings we work best when we work together in a community. That's why cavemen used to do it. So think about people's goals, how they want to be held accountable, why they're doing this. Get to know Liz, get to know Vanessa, get to know Misaya, get, get to know Igor and Maria Lisa. Get to know them. Know their story. Stories are the most powerful ways to transfer energy, right? There are 8 billion people walking this earth. Everyone has their own story. Get to know someone a little bit. You'll find out probably things you didn't expect from them. Build that deeper relationship. And then once you get to know them, always remember, or at least I like to remind myself, be the person that you need. Be the person that you needed when you needed someone. We've all had adversity in our lives, I imagine. We've all needed someone in our life at some point. So now that we're at a certain level, because we're all here. So we're already vibrating at a certain level of frequency. We're all doing pretty good. We could always improve, but we're all doing pretty good, right? Can I get some head nods? <laughs> Are you guys feeling good? Thank you. Um, so be that person for somebody else because they're gonna be super grateful for you. And that's how you build an empire. Because remember that success isn't measured by the money that you make but by the lives that you change so this this industry can be super super powerful it could literally save lives not just the lifestyle or the quality of life but the life itself and maybe a lot of that has gone over people's heads because they've never been put in that situation or even heard about it but that's the reality of you know it is what it is i've heard it multiple times which is why i'm perpetually grateful for being in the position that i'm at and helping the people that I help because this thing changes and saves lives. I see, I see Lewis over there with his baby, he's so cute. But remember that the, the results that you seek lie in the work that you've been avoiding, in the tedious details that you've been not thinking about. 
So you gotta make the sacrifices. You gotta put in the time. You gotta put in the work. You gotta get to know people. You gotta be humble. You got to be personable, be relatable, you know, so on and so forth. And I think I want to go over a little bit more notes of Simon Sinek. I don't know if anyone knows who he is. I talk about him a lot. Um, if you guys have an extra hour or two a day, I highly, highly, highly recommend you going on YouTube, searching up who Simon Sinek is and his way of speaking. Not only will you learn how to speak, changing your tonality of voice, but also how to tell stories and how to lead. He has a few books, start with why, leaders eat last. Uh, what are some other ones? We're, we're gonna keep it to those two. <laughs> um, but he says that the way to building a great company is building a great, is building great people, right? The infinite game, thank you, Tyler. Yeah, we'll get into that. So people over profits always, keep that, keep that. Jason Brown will say it at convention, people over profits always. I care more about my people than I'll ever care about my rank or the money that trading makes me. My people come first. Will before resources. And then to get into the infinite game, there are players in multiple infinite games throughout our lives. Finite means that there are agreed upon objectives. That is finite. Infinite means that there are changeable rules and a perpetual game, and it's infinite. So business is an infinite game. Too many people talk about business like it's a finite game. They teach leaders like it's finite and they must, we must lead with an infinite mindset. So there are multiple finite games in the infinite game, right? Like we do wanna be able to measure certain things, but we wanna remember that, you know, getting that extra rank is not the end of the tunnel. Getting someone to bring in a personal is not the finish line. Having that kind of mindset will only inch you in a little bit at a time and give you bigger retracements. But having an infinite mindset means that you're perpetually in process of getting there, right? It's all about the journey. So you don't judge a ship by how calm the crew behaves in calm waters, you judge it by how the crew behaves in cruel waters. A ship is safe at harbor, but that's not what ships are for. I forgot where I heard that, but I liked it. Hmm? Simon Sinek? Sounds about right. You can't run an or a successful organization long-term in a space where people feel the need to hide things. So this is kind of where you want to be like, uh, I forgot where I was. I was in a training and I said, if you can't have a certain conversation with people, then that is kind of a gauge of where your relationship lies. So if you have an organization where people are just hiding things and going behind your back, then that's kind of a gauge of where your organization lies. But if you have an organization where everyone's transparent, we're helping people, we're communicating openly, we're expressing the good, the bad, the pretty, the ugly, the weird, then that's great. That's a really, really good gauge. Um, I think one thing to kind of bring about is incentives. We've heard this word a lot in terms of, you know, this is the next incentive. These are the next challenges, the next prizes, so on and so forth. And I just want to highlight that we should be incentivizing performance. I mean, we should be incentivizing behavior and not just performance. So let's say the goal is P600 and someone was one shy away, so they didn't make it. Does that mean that they shouldn't get the, the the prize, they did everything that they could. They went above and beyond. So we should incentivize the behavior. I applaud people that put in the work, even if they're not at the rank or the level of success. Always remember that the process, what goes on behind closed doors says a lot more than the title on a piece of paper, right? Because driving a series of finite games after finite games will eventually burn out. If you just keep saying, um, I don't even know, like giveaways for this, giveaways for that, like that's cool, but people are gonna get tired of it. But when you incentivize people for actually doing the behaviors, the actions to want to genuinely get the next rank up 
or you know, just putting in the work or just being a good person or showing up consistently, those are the things that we should incentivize. Those are the things that we should, what's the word that I'm looking for? Promote, mm, acknowledge. When companies are loyal to us, we will be loyal to them. I worked at an office for five years <laughs> um, since I was 18 and they were great people. Um, it was a family owned business, but they were doing really, really, really well. So honestly, like they're great people. I'll still go back. I'll visit the office. I'll see, I'll send them a postcard. I'll see how they're doing because I knew that they always cared about who I was as a person, not just an employee. I knew that they take care of me, even though I'm not working for them anymore. I know that that's still family. And I've been offered other positions and other companies to do pretty much similar thing, but I declined immediately because I said, no, I can't go to the competition. This is my family. This is where my loyalty lies. So we will only be loyal to a company that cares about us. Same thing with this business. We will only be loyal to the quote unquote uplines that care about us. Running a business is the same as getting healthy. It's a lifestyle. It's not gonna happen overnight. So you can't just clean house and say, okay, the toxicity is out. What about tomorrow? What about next week? What about next month? This is a lifestyle, this is a process. Once you hit that fitness goal, it's not like people stop, right? You don't just get big and call it quits. <laughs> You don't just bench 225 and then be like, all right, cool, I'm done for life. Cash in your fitness, what is it, your gym membership? No, this is a, pro this is a lifestyle. How you get to the projections matters more than hitting it on a date. I like, I like, but I don't like when people say, I'm so happy and grateful for, you know, hitting P5000, December, you know, whatever date. I like it because it gives you a goal. But working that process to aim for that goal is a lot more important than whether or not you hit it on that date. Does that make sense, everyone? So it's cool to have it. If you have a goal with a date in mind, awesome. But just focus more on the process. Don't be upset if you don't hit it on that date. Okay, we got five practices to lead and then I'm gonna pass it over to Tim. Five practices to lead. A just cause. People will deny other businesses for your business. So think about, you know, you're getting offered. <laughs> think about people cross recruiting. You're going to get offered other positions from other teams, excuse me, other teams or other businesses, other companies. But your loyalty stands here because you know that we care about you guys. People want to know where you're going. People want to know your story because your why comes from your story. Number two would be trusting teams. People feel psychologically, psychologically safe. Um, I think I brought upon, upon the point of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, of basic needs, where it's like, okay, you need the basic necessities, you need food and water, and then you need, you need to feel safe somewhere. So when you don't feel safe, you know that you're kind of backing away. You're kind of making yourself small. You're not participating. So when you do feel safe, you're more open. You're open to giving and you're open to receiving. So people need a space where they feel safe. Absence of trusting teams mean people are lying and faking. Leadership isn't about being in charge. It's about taking care of the people that you are in charge of. So don't let that go over your head. Leadership isn't about being in charge. It's about taking care of the people you are in charge of, quote unquote, in charge of. So don't think that because you're in a leadership role or you've been in this company for a certain amount of time that you could just tell people what to do. That's not the case. You need to earn your way there and you earn your way there by caring about people. And also know that people or leaders aren't responsible for results. They're in charge of the people who are in charge of the results. We need to take leadership because we need to teach leadership because that's being responsible for the growth of another human being. The next one is worthy revival, competitive, being competitive. 
um, your strengths reveal your weaknesses, opportunity to grow and improve, that's the infinite game. The next one would be the capacity for existential flexibility. We need individually and as a community, we need to have a willingness to make profound strategic shifts in order for us to succeed. So be adaptable. Just because we've been doing something a certain way doesn't mean that it has to always be a certain way. We need to be able to see what works, what doesn't, how we can improve, so on and so forth. I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but we need to be able to apply different things, to modify, to get better. We need to prepare the team at all times for whatever it is that they need. And then last but not least, we need to have the courage to lead. We need to have the courage to have uncomfortable situations or have uncomfortable conversations. We need to have the courage to get down and dirty. We need to have the courage to be in the trenches. Great leaders are great students of leadership. Relationships are a form of external support. So we are your support system. A lot of people know that when they have problems, whether it be personal or with the business, that they can come to a lot of us because we care. And then remember that it doesn't matter if you have a official leadership role or not. It doesn't matter if you have 30 people in your organization or zero people in your organization. Care about people, they will care about you. Know your people and they'll get to know you. They'll hold you accountable. You'll be that entrepreneurial friend that we've been talking about. Socialize with other people. And really guys, I know that a lot of this information wasn't necessarily new, but it was information that maybe we had to have in front of us at this certain point, because a lot of us are dealing with those plateaus and they come naturally. A lot of us are dealing with like, okay, I need to do something new. I need to do something different. I need to just get better at either leading or building better connections or manifesting, whatever it is that you need. But the information that you seek, like I said before, the results that you seek, the magic that you want to appear lies in the work that you've been avoiding. So get down, get down to the nitty gritty, get down and dirty, get back in the trenches. That's what I've been talking about. I need to get back in the trenches. I need to go 45 levels deep and see, okay, what's up? <laughs> Who's the newest person? What do I have to do to get you to P150? I need to make sure that you have notebooks. I need to make sure that you know your why. I need to make sure that you know your goal. I need to make sure that you're on these calls. I need to make sure that you have other communicate, um, I guess other relationships with other people because when people feel connected with others, that's why they stay. Like I mentioned before, I forgot who I used as a, I think I used Monica as an example, but if Monica only talks to the people that are in her business, that's cool. But if the people in her business talk to people in other organizations, other cross lines, whatever you want to call them, then they start to build friendships. And then when they feel at home, when they feel safe, when they feel like they're in their niche, they stay. It's, there's really not a profound or magical science to this. It's just all about remembering that we're human and the, what we need, <laughs> what, it, what happens in intrinsic nature. So it should be happening in our business. Um, so with that being said, I know that Tim is going to go down into the technicals and maybe a lot more of the things that you guys want to write down, always have a notebook ready, right? Always be willing to receive information so that you can apply it because I'm sure that's what you're looking for. But guys, remember that people, that we are people and we're dealing with people. And the more that we get to know them, the more that we, maybe if you, maybe we even feel like we're bothering them because we want to get to know them. <laughs> um, that's just that's just showing that we care so anytime someone does anything for you remember that it's just me saying that we care whether I buy you a latte whether I give you a pen whether I buy you some fries or anything in between just know that that's me saying I'm grateful for you I care for you and I have you in my corner so with that being said I'm gonna pass it over to Tim who's gonna give us a lot of notes and I'm ready to have them as well so give him a few um, more moments of your attention Take a deep breath, be ready to receive this intention, this information, and yeah, 
Thanks for all the sevens, guys. Appreciate you. No, blow it up. Y'all know the drill. Blow it up, blow it up, blow it up. You know, one thing I really challenge all to do, I'm taking glasses off here. One thing I challenge all to do is take something that you learned from the training that just happened right now and about 10 minutes, I'm going to be done in about 10 minutes and, and drop it into the, in the QC chat in Telegram. Share something massive that you learned that you want to implement, right? Not just something that you learned, but something that you want to implement. This is what I learned and this is what it's going to make me do. You know, I think once we come together, and the QC chat's lit, right? But I think once we come together and understand that the QC chat is a hub of information, I'm gonna keep nailing this into people's head. You're like, oh, Tim, I heard you say this. Well, if you heard me say it, you'd do it. So you didn't really hear anything, right? So y'all get the point. It's a hub of information. It's a hub of resources. It's a hub of growth. It's a hub of personal development. It's a place where you can ask questions open-ended. It's a place where you can check in with people. It's a place where you can vent about things that are going on. Once we turn that, you know, it's kind of a marketplace in a weird way, right? It's a marketplace. You ever seen a super busy marketplace? You know, it, there's things always going on. There's always people walking around. There's always conversations. That's the point of Telegram, right? So really just take something you learn, what you're going to implement from it and drop it into that chat. Or if you thought of somebody during the call, right? Message them after this. Hey, I was just on a training and I thought about you. Blah, 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 blah. Like, blah. Don't wait till tomorrow to do it. Do it right now, right? Get that taken care of. And so really the topic was, you know, for me is, is diving deep into your organization. Diving deep into your organization. Do you know who's in your organization? Do you know who the newest person is? Are you keeping track of that information? Do you have a personal relationship with them? You know, there was this time, I'm not going to name the team or what, you know, really where it happened, but, you know, I built relationships with certain leaders. And there was this group chat made. And Mike and I got added into the group chat. And this was the biggest, this is why I had this massive realization. So remember, I'm not just reading things from a book or some audio that I listen to and I'm just telling y'all to go do it. A lot of the times what I'm training on is things that I'm going through, things that I'm doing, things that I'm working on. And I'm just sharing that information because I know it's something that I need to work on. It's probably something that other people need to work on. Um, and I got, we got dropped into this group chat into this individual's organization's group chat. It was a private chat that they had for their team. They sent updates, meetups, different things like that. And I posted a training in there. Where I was like, hey, everyone, make sure you hop on the, the call. And someone, and someone messaged in there, who is this? Who the hell is Tim? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Either this person, I, really, we don't have that good of a relationship because this individual's not talking about us and you know who we are. Or I just never dove deep into this individual's organization because I always thought they got it handled. They're doing well. The team's growing. I don't need to get involved. If they want help, they'll ask for help. But that was proof to me right there as a leader. And, and this is where, you know, you've heard Mike and Nancy talk about the five levels of leadership by John C. Maxwell, another phenomenal book that you should go buy and listen to and, and take notes on and implement is simply just because, let's say you're a P1K, right? A P1K typically has like, you know, three P600s, a lot of a few, P, you know, multiple P150s, a lot of customers. Just because you're a level two leader with a P600 right at the top of your leg does not mean the people in their organization respects or knows you at all, right? So just because you're able to speak and do something a certain way to someone else doesn't mean that everyone looks at you like that, right? There's very few people in the world that ever receive like level five leadership is like the Gandhi's, the Buddha's, the Jesus of the world. Like those are the level five. There's very few people that get classified as level five leaders. So let's talk about level four leadership, right? That takes time. It takes time for someone to want to follow you for who you are and for what you've done for them. So you can't, you know, let's say I'm looking through Marcellus's organization. I can't go through Marcellus's organization and have the same conversation with his team that I'll have with him because Marcellus and I conversation and our, my level of leadership to Marcellus and relationship with Marcellus is different. So are you going through and developing that next tier of leaders? I think this is one thing that transparently Mike and I are focusing on a lot or should be even more focusing on is that next level of leadership. Right. We, we know who the P6s, P1s, P2Ks are. 
right? We've worked with them for over a year now. I'm sick of all of you. I'm done with you guys. I'm looking for the next wave of leaders, right? The next P150s, the next P600s, the next P1Ks, the next P2000s. Because guess what? I help with that next wave of leadership. You know what happens to you? You rank up too. <laughs> so it's, it's not like, oh, Tim doesn't love me. No, 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 no. I love you, right? But you won't go next level, right, if you're not willing to dive deep. And, and this is something that's crazy. Jason Brown said this to me. And I have random notes through here. So not everything's in order. I'm just kind of, I'm looking at him going back and forth. He said, when's the last time, he asked me this, when's the last time you personally enrolled a P1000? When's the last time you personally enrolled someone and helped them hit P1000 in their first 30, 60, or 90 days? Ask yourself that. When's the last time I enrolled someone and helped them go P150? Or maybe if you're a P1K and above, a P600. When's the last time I got down and dirty with my organization? Or have I just reached the rank I'm comfortable now and I'm just hoping that my team does the rest of the work? Because if you're not getting down and dirty into the organization, it's never going to develop. It's, it's, it, yeah, you'll hit ranks, but it's not going to last. It's not going to last. Guys, like, I see a lot of things outside of our team, right? And I'm sure y'all see it. How did that person hit Chairman 10 in, in 90 days? But a year and a half from now, they're still Chairman 10. No, you go. I'll let you figure out the answer yourself. There's no relationships. There's no relationships. So if you want something that's going to last forever, right, it's cool to hit a rank. But it's way better to keep that forever and not derank, right? Because you've built leaderships, you, you've built relationships, you've built depth. That's the most important thing here, right? That's the most important thing here is how deep are you going into your organization? And if they're smaller, right? These are just things to learn about, right? These are things that I wish I knew when I first got started. I thought this was just, yo, I've made money trading, and I was just sign people up and they'll do the same amount of work that I did and life is easy. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that, right? And in this business, we, we build and we build because we want to help people. Like y'all, like I'll tell you not to build if you don't want to help people. Like straight up, don't build if you don't want to spend the time. Like it's, it's not bad. It's just, who, it's just the place that you're in right now, right? If you're in that place of, oh, I don't really want to do the one-on-one -on -one calls with people. I don't want to be that babysitter. You know, I don't want to hear the relationship issue then don't build, right? Or if you do have a list, plug them in with someone who does want to do that, right? Because then they'll actually be taken care of. You'll actually have a business. Now, um, a couple more things, and we're going to jump off. And I have, like, a couple random notes that I randomly thought about that I talked about last night in the leadership meeting that I think are good for y'all to hear um, in regards to building business into the decades. Like, how do I successfully run a business 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, what I've been able to learn from some mentors that I have. Um, this is huge right here. Do y'all know like how many days New York is away in London? Anyone have a clue? London is 17 days away. New York is 32 days away. 17 and 32, right? 17 and 32. That's important pieces of information, right? I'll be type those in there. 17 for London, 32 for New York, All right? Those are important pieces of information. And it may actually be one more than that. It's just because we're, we're currently already on Tuesday over here. But um, that's important pieces of information because you have, to, you have to know where you're at, right? Where you want to be before that date and where you want to be after that date. A lot of people like... A lot, this is the, this is the most dangerous thing that you guys can do. And these are side topics. I'm really not going deep into organizations right now. This is just important, important information that some of you are going to take and apply. And some of you is going to go through one year and out the other. And it's going to be the reason why you're, you're watching other people win. And, and this is me just being straight up honest. So many people say, okay, cool. Well, London is two weeks away. I already have 10 people who are coming to London. Right, Tim said that if I bring 10 people, I'll go P1K because that's, that's the average number required 
you to hit a rank right after event is 10 people to go P1K, right? You know, P2K is about 25 to 30. P5K is about 50 to 75. Chairman 10 is 100 plus, right? So now I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to chill for these two weeks because I know where there's going to be Jason Brown. There's going to be David Amitier. There's going to be Matt Rosa. There's going to be Julian Kushner. There's going to be Bryce Thompson. There's going to be Chris. I already know they're going to hype up my team. My team's going to start building, right? That is such a dangerous way to speak. That is such a dangerous a way to think. I can guarantee you right now, and I was right last time we had an event, watch David Amitie. I guarantee you, David Amitie will do a training before these conventions and talk exactly about what I'm saying. He will say the exact thing that I'm saying, right? And I'm speaking on this because this is who I've learned it from, is from the individuals who have the massive success. What you do now is going to absolutely determine what happens after these conventions, right? So here's my challenge to you. Over the next 17 days, are you willing to go harder than you've ever gone before? Are you willing to speak to more people a day, hop on more sessions a day, do more trainings a day, right? Are you willing to call throughout your organization? Guys, if you're a P6 right now, you only have 12 people in your organization. Call them. Yo, Johnny, bro, what's going on? We literally just got done talking about building relationships. This is one thing I, I made the leaders do last night. I said, I need you to, number one, complete your inventory because you need to know your business. Like, that's just, that's just normal. Number two, I need you to make a list of all the names that are in your organization. Did you get on a call with them? If they're going to New York or if they're going to London. Because if we want, if we know building deeper relationships is what builds the business, is what creates legacy, is what creates retention, do you think sending a voice message or just a text to someone's going to work? Or do you think getting on the phone with them is going to be helpful? It's going to be better, right? So get on the phone, build a relationship. How is everything going? Have you been reaching your goals? Are you following your action plan? What do you need help with? Oh, by the way, right, are you going to London or New York? Or are you doing both? That's it. That's the question, right? It's not if, it's not, oh, like, you know, it's like, it's mandatory. Like, it's like, <laughs> it's mandatory for someone to go to this convention. It really is. Like, I don't, I, it's not because like, I want to have, I want to have 300 people in New York. Just straight up, honestly, that's my goal is 300 in New York. I literally am talking about it in the chat all the time. New York, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300. Why? Why? Because could you imagine what would happen to the culture if 300 people showed up from our organization and went bananas? It would be bananas. And it, it's, it's not because I want people there. It's because I know you need to be there. I know you need to be there. It's like your parents want you to do well in school because they wholeheartedly believe that, you know, getting good grades is going to increase your intelligence, which is going to increase your ability to get a good job, which is going to increase your financial safety. You know what I'm saying? Right. The same kind of concept, except the one's a lie. And the one I'm telling you is the truth. <laughs> like you have to be there. You have to be there. Right. So are you going through your organization? That's my challenge to you. Right. That's my challenge to you is, are you going through your organization? Number two is over the next two weeks and moving forward, are you launching properly? Are you launching properly? This is one thing that I noticed, and this is more so for leaders. Like you guys, you can be a developing leader and have no one in your organization. When I say leaders, what I mean by that is people who want to lead people, right? That, that's what I mean when I'm talking to leaders. When I say the word leaders, hey, leaders, like I'm speaking to the people that want to lead people, right? We see the flyers like, Four chairmen's popped in January in under 30 days. And we're like, that's so cool. Oh, I'm so happy for them. I can't wait to be chairman. I want to do that. Everyone gets excited. But no one is willing to do the, to do the work to, to actually make it happen. Right? Yeah, they came from other companies. Yeah, they had organizations. But did you know that they were doing events every single day? Did you know they were doing calls every single day? Did you know they were launching people properly? So this is my challenge to you is for the people that want to run, for the people that actually want to work, for the newest person that you bring in, help them go P1000 in 30 days. P1000 in 30 days, and this is how. And it is simple, right? Because it's simply just a decision, right? When people say, oh, this is my goal, 
But in reality, this is what I want. You're, you're saying try. That's what you're doing. You're, you're never going to complete that goal. You're never going to complete the reality goal because you don't believe in that one either. Straight up, think about this. Like, yeah, I, I want to bring 300 people to the event, but in reality, I think only 100 people are going to come. Why did you even say 300? Why did you even say 300? You are the one that's determining making the decision of what reality is. Yo, 300 people are coming to New York. That's my realistic goal. Like, that's no ands if, or buts. Like, going to New York is easy. It's a cheap flight. It's a cheap Airbnb. It's a cheap ticket. Chairman 500 is going to be there. Chris Terry is going to be there. Mike is speaking there. Mike is speaking in London. Like, it just, it's, it's no if, ands, or buts to me. It's the reality. So how do you go P1000? How do you make this decision? This is what blew my mind when Gary McSween talked about this. I, I tweaked it a little bit, I think, to make it a little bit more easier to understand. And David Amitye talked about this. David Amitye broke down how to go chairman in 90 days. And, and this was like what really shifted my mind was, wow, it's literally just a decision. It's literally just a decision to do an activity for 90 days straight. And that's it. And you'll get the result. If you don't get the result, okay, in 90 days you make an extra $2,000 a month. Are you really tripping? <laughs> Probably not. Probably freaking not. Let's say that Cody gets started with me, right? Cody sees the vision. Cody's an A person. Cody's all in. I'm going to say, Cody, who are three to five people you know right now that think like you? That when they see this business, they'll want to run it. Like, well, I got my boy Tyler, I got Andy, I got my boy Lewis, you know, I got Monica, and I, I, I got Vanessa, right? Awesome. Get them to your house tomorrow night. Get them to your house at 7 o'clock. Show up at the house at 7 o'clock. Sit down with Tyler, Andy, Monica, Vanessa, Lewis. Paint the vision. He hit P150 in one night. Three are going to sign up, two may say no, or they all may sign up. I don't know. Now, what is your job after that? This, this literally, this is, there's three activities. There's three things we do here. What is your job after that? Show Tyler, show Lewis, and show Vanessa, the three who signed up, the same exact thing. Yo, Tyler, who are three to five people that you know think like you and want to build this, like they would want to make money building this business. Lewis, who are three to five people that you know? Vanessa, who are three to five people that you know? Yo, Cody, who are three to five more people that you know? Can we use your house again tomorrow night? Yeah? Dope. All right, come here. Paint the vision. You guys know what that adds up to? Four, eight, 12, 16. You now have 16 people in your business in 48 hours. Cool. You know what you do there? You teach the 12 how to find three to five more. Okay, Vicky, who are three to five people that think like you? Okay, Sheila, who are three to five people that think like you? Hey, Monica, who are three to five people that think? You know what happens when you do 12 times three? 36. P1000, 72 hours. Yeah, I didn't ask you. I, said, I didn't say, hey, like, do you, do you want to find three? Who are three to five people that you know? You told me you want to build the business. You told me you want to go chairman. You told me you want to hit ranks. You told me you believe in this. Cool. So I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to actually create that belief into a reality. So you do that once a week. It's still P150 your first week, P600 the second week, P1000 third. Tim, I just launched a new person. Okay, well, Tim, I launched Andy. Andy and I don't live in the same neighborhood. Okay. Ask Andy, who are three to five people that think like him, want to make money like him, and can they download Zoom and hop on a webinar at 7 o'clock? Boom, same thing. You paint the vision. You don't hop on the call and say, okay, guys, well, if you're thinking about it, awesome, guys. So this is the game plan. This is the blueprint. This is what we're doing. Do you guys have three to five people that you can think of right now off the top of your head that can, we want to do this? Cool. I'm going to actually give you all 30 minutes. Call them really quick. We're going to do this again at 9 o'clock. You want to know how David Amitye? You all should look up Cash Cow by David Amitye. I don't know, Cash Cow by, uh, shoot. Who is David and me? Uh, Holton Bugs. Holton Bugs. I don't think it's cash. I gotta find the video. It's like a 12 minute long video. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, post that in the chat, the QC chat for me. Um, David and Metier, when he first joined I Am, 
ran six events a day. He would, run a, he would run calls and he would do three events at nighttime in his house. He would make his phone calls and have people come at different times. His, his 3 p.m. meeting, he would say, hey guys, if you're ready to get started, here's the information now because I have another group coming at six and whoever signs up now is getting that group underneath them. Hey guys, at six o'clock, I have another group coming at nine and I'm doing a webinar at 11. If you get started now, those groups are going to be put underneath you. And I'm going to be building a leg for you. You're already going to have 40% of your business built. Guys, it, it's simple. Like, why, why, why make it difficult? Oh, well, Tim, like, you know, I got I to gotta build the relationship. I got I to, gotta, you know, I got to ask them questions. I got to, you know, I got to do this thing. And the, well, no, let me tell you something really quick. People want to make money. Let me tell you something really quick. Every person I've gotten a call this, in the past two weeks has signed up. Yo, yeah, I'm just chilling. We're traveling around right now. We're having, oh, damn, that's dope. This is real? Yeah, it's real. Okay, cool. <laughs> Straight up. Like, it, it's very simple. Once you make the decision that it's simple, once you make the decision that you're going to do it, it's actually going to occur. Now, doing this is not sustainable, right? You can't, you can't be crazy all the time, right? A plane doesn't, you know, go the same speed it goes after it lifts off. It goes the fastest in the beginning because it needs to boost itself enough to get up into the air. What does it do when it's in the air? It coasts. It coasts, right? So there's moments in time where you need to lift off and there's moments in time when you need to coast. When you're launching your business, you need to lift off, right? Now you've just put 30 people into the business. What do you think is a smart idea? Spend two weeks making sure they have the apps. Spend two weeks having one-on-ones with all of them, going through the training courses with them, guiding them how to get onto the calls. It's not just, like I said, it's not a sign-up game. You have to launch them properly still, right? There's still work behind that. I'm just talking about hitting P1K in three events. That's it. it it's that simple. Find the person that wants to do that. David Amitia says, if you find, if you close, what is it, three people a day, or if you sign up 10 people a week, you sign up 10 people a week, you speak to 100 people a week, so whatever, the numbers that he says at 10%, those 10 sign up, and you find five other people that want to do that with you, you'll hit Chairman 10 in 90 days. Like, well, Tim, you know, I've been stuck at where I'm at for six months. Well, have you made the decision? Or if you just, I keep saying I'm stuck, I, I'm stuck, I am stuck. That's why you're stuck. We talk about I am's and gratefulness in the beginning but you keep saying I'm stuck, right? It's the decision, it's the decision, it's the decision, it's the decision, it's the decision. Now, this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about because Nancy brought something up that I've talked about a lot about, um, you know, how often is your business open? Would, if I owned a coffee shop, and it was only open two hours a day, let's just say from like two to 4 p.m. When, no when everyone's working, no one's on lunch break, right? No one's driving to work, no one's leaving work. Would my, would my coffee shop be successful? Probably not, right? Probably not. So ask yourself, how many hours a day is my business open? I'm talking about I am Mastery Academy. How many op calls are being done in your organization? How many people are prospecting? How many people are presenting? How many events are currently occurring? Let's say you have 50 people in your organization. And there's only five people who are doing one op call a day and you're doing one op call a day is six hours a day going to create a six figure business for you, a seven figure business for you. Probably not. One of the best things that I've ever learned from um, an individual in a different company um, has been doing this for decades, like literally multimillionaire, like, like extremely successful, right? He says, it's how many people, how many people can you have in your business who are doing one meeting a day? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, like, think about it. Like one meeting a day. That's it. That's all you really need. He's like, this is the long-term game. He's like, you have to do this for 10 years before you start making money. I was like, shit, no, that's your story. That's not my story. But beyond the point, 
right? He's like, you have to do this for 10 years before you become really wealthy in this industry. He's like, do you think people want to sprint for 10 years straight? Or do you think people want a nice consistent grind that they can work on part-time building their fortune? I was like, that makes sense. So I'll start doing the math, right? My, I have 500 people in our organization. Let's say 20% is building the business because really 10 to 20% builds. Like you have to be honest with yourself. Only about 10 to 20% of people are going to build the business. Everyone else is going to go to free or P150 or they're just going to be actively paying customers who love the services and just want to be a part of the organization. So let's do the math here. Let's have 100 people talking to one person a day. Let's do seven days a week, not one person, exposing. What I mean by that is exposing, like they're presenting, they're sharing the video, they're doing an activity that will produce a result. They're not just having random conversations with people. And you did that for 365 days. That's 36,500 exposures because you had 100 people doing one person a day. 36,500 exposures. Right. Let's say that you're the closer for all those calls. Right. And it's not, it's not always going to be like, and your closing rate is 20%. You close two out of 10 people times that by 0.2, you have 7,300 people in your organization. You're currently chairman 100 because hundred people were speaking to one person a day. Remember, it's not about one person doing hundred percent of the work. It's about hundred people doing 1% of the work. That's leverage. That's leverage. Brian Crullers talks about this. If you ever read Building an Empire, he talks about the power of two. Say you start your business and it's only you and you expose two people a day. So you meet someone at a gas station, you compliment their shoes, you get their Instagram, you hit them up, you, they see your story, they're like, hey, what do you do? You, you send them the video, right? You're going through your list, you're making phone calls, you have them come to an event. Well, it, it doesn't matter, they're exposed, two people a day right? 30 times two, that's 60 people, right? And he says this, he says, even if you're the worst, you're still going to close 5%. You're still going to close 5%. So he's times that by 0 0.05. You signed up three personals this month, exposing two people a day, two people a day. What does that mean? Well, that means that not everyone's going to sign up. So I need to have peace of outcome when I get no. That's a massive realization, right? But I hit P150 in a month. That's, that's good. Now, what if, right? And, and this is for those who want to go slower, right? I, I just told you that you can go P1000 in three days if you want. If you want, right? Or this is the option. Pick the option that you want. I'm giving you an abundance of options to choose from here, right? And I, I know this isn't about diving deep into relationships, but these are things that I'm thinking about right now. And I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are enjoying it because it's, it's, it's important information to know. So you have three people now. So now it's Tyler's just started the business. Tyler signed up Alana, Tyler signed up Andy, Tyler signed up um, Emily. Now you got four people speaking to two people a day, right? Over 30 days. How many people is that exposed? That's 240. So let's say you still suck. <laughs> You're still only closing at 5%. 12 new people have joined your business. You're P600 month two. There's now you plus 15 other people, meaning 16. So let's do 16 times two times 30. That's 960 people in month number three. Okay, awesome. Let's say you still suck. 960 times 0 0.05. That's 48 people. 48 plus four plus 12, 64. Now in three months, right? In three months, speaking to two people a day, you're going to have people that do more. You're going to have your runners. You're going to have your really good weeks. Like I've had weeks, I've had days where you, I put in like five people and then I've had a month where I don't sign anyone up, right? That's going to happen. So P150 the first month, P600 the second month, and jumping to P2K the third month, speaking to two people a day and teaching people how to actually duplicate that process. I mean, does this make sense? Like, can I, can I get like a, a QC in the chat if it makes sense? Like if this is like, yo, this is like simplified. It, it's not difficult. It's simplified. So simplify the process. Don't teach people how to go chairman. Teach people how to go P150. Like most people, when they see this, they don't know what trading is. So that you already, 
learning how to trade, it's already, they got to go through that process. Then they got to balance the business. Then they got to balance their life. Then they got to balance their financial situation. Then they got to balance their, you know, their family issues. Then they got to balance, you get what I'm saying? People got all this shit going on in the world. They got all these things they got to deal with, right? What if we just make it nice and simple? Just make it nice and simple. Hey, bro, expose two people a day on Instagram. Expose two people a day on Facebook. Make a list of 100 names and expose two people from there a day. Hey, I'm launching a business. I want you to check this out. Can I get your opinion on it? Sure, yeah, send me over the video. Exposed. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, 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 see how, you see how simple that conversation was? Hey, hey, Kendra, I'm actually deciding to launch my own business. I have a, a lot of respect for you, and I know you always have my best interests in mind. Would you mind checking out this video really quick for me and giving me your honest opinion on the business? You know what she's going to say? Yes, sure. How long is it? It's 13 minutes. When do you think you can watch? I can get it done this afternoon. Awesome. I look forward to reaching out to you and seeing what you like best about it. Hey, Kendra, what did you like best about it? Oh, well, I thought the education was super cool that you can just literally learn about all these. I didn't even know what Forex was. Hey, well, I know this is crazy, but I think if you and I run this together, I think if you and I run this together, we can absolutely kill. How about this? I'm going to go ahead and send you the link to get started, and I'll introduce you to someone to get you launched properly who has the success that I want from this opportunity. <laughs> Do that to two people a day. And that's it, right? That is it. That is it, guys. So we're 17 days away from London. We're 32 days from New York. Where do you want to be and where do you want to go? These are self-reflection questions, right? These are massive self-reflection questions. And you have to, you really have to say like, am I saying out loud what sounds cool or what I actually believe in, right? Does it sound cool or is it what I actually believe in? Like, like think about this, like what would you be doing right now? Like, honestly, like honestly, and the answer is going to be funny because I'm going to tell you, you probably wouldn't be on this call right now. What would you be doing right now if you were one person away from chairman? You'd sign up your dog, like honestly, at that point, right? But no, you would be on the phone. You'd be calling, you'd be calling your grandma. I know you don't have a bank account, but you need to check this Bitcoin shit out. Trust me, grandma, it's gonna be amazing. You would be calling people left and right. So what's the difference between you being 470 people away from chairman and being one person away from chairman? Because you're always one person away from a financial breakthrough. You're always one person away who brings in the 1,000. Guys, the top earner in this company is currently not an I am. Do you know that there's people? I met a lady with over 780,000 people in her organization at GoPro. She had 780,000 people in her organization. Her organization, her organization, not the companies. She's just a leader in that company. Is seven times bigger than I am Mastery Academy. The top earner isn't here yet. Jason Brown and Matt Rosa will not be big shots with by the end of this decade. Straight up. I'm just being honest with you. Right? You're always one person away. You're always one person away from the next rank. That is the mentality you have to think. And if you can think like crazy like that, you can get a lot of crazy things done. So I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I'm actually 23 minutes late to my next call, but life happens. Um, I'll get that figured out and apologize. So I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to hopefully have this recorded. Um, the internet's a little bit crazy. We've got like three Zooms going on right now. So it will be posted. If you have questions, please reach out. Remember, use the Telegram as a hub. Use your chats as a hub. Get plugged into Discord. Um, the trainings are phenomenal. The signals are phenomenal. Life is great. Life is good. Life is bullish. We are QC. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Chat soon.